Hey, what's going on, Internet? Josh Noel, Sunduck Film. And we got a great tutorial because we're going to put text behind objects inside this tutorial. Now, this is going to work great with video, and you can even do it with photos. But in this case, I want to show you how you can do it with a motion picture. So, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to mask this tree out very easily, and we're going to 3D camera track what's going on in the scene so we can easily put the text behind an object. So, let's go ahead and go into a new composition here. I already have my footage, and this is a still image in which I animated, so it's not actually real video. But the reason why I'm not using real video is because I'm too lazy to go out and shoot some video of the forest or something like that. I just pulled off a picture and animated it. So this will work great with video with, or with photos. So, so go ahead and type out your text with the text title tool. So once your text is in here, go ahead and pre-compose this. Go up to layer, pre-compose, and we can call it text placeholder. And uh, the reason why we want to pre-compose this is so we can easily change the text a little bit later. And there will be no problem. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put this behind our video here. So if we put the text placeholder underneath our footage, you'll see that's right behind the entire, you know, video plate there, but we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our footage layer, go up to edit, duplicate. So whatever your footage is, duplicate it. Bring that, you know, duplicated footage to the top. And what we're going to do is grab the roto brush, which is all the way at the top here, grab it. And then what you're going to do is double click the footage layer, and then that layer opens up in the layer panel here at the top. So now you should be able to see this green paintbrush. And what we're going to do is we're just going to paint over the area that we want to put our text behind. So this tree, for example, is where we want to put our text behind. And as you can see, the roto brush pretty much selects all those related pixels. So that's great. Now, what we need to do is basically move forward in time and track this shot with the mask. So what we can do is grab our playhead right here and move forward just by a few frames. And what's gonna happen is that the roto brush is gonna analyze the frames from the first frame to where we're at now at frame five. So you can see this little green bar going through here. And basically what we need to do is analyze this and make sure that, um, that obviously we are only selecting the tree. So here we can see that the foreground here is getting a little bit selected. So what we can do is hold down Alt on our keyboard and we can just paint that out and obviously paint the new areas that were deselected. And for the most part, you know, you just want to make sure you're getting the area that your text is going to be behind. So keep that in mind. And then what we can do is continue to analyze forward. And you're going to want to repeat this process all the way to, you know, the end of your animation. So in our case, we'll keep it at five seconds. And go ahead and do that. And then I'll be right back once this entire analysis is done. Okay, so once you are done analyzing the clip all the way to the end of your animation, what you're going to need to do, and make sure to do this, click on the button freeze, and go ahead and click it. It's basically going to analyze all your frames that you have covered up, and this should take about a minute or so depending on how long your clip is, but make sure that you hit that button freeze or you're going to lose all that work that you have done. So now that our tree is cut out, we can see that our placeholder is right behind the tree, and that is awesome. So we can come here, you can see before and after. And that's great. No problem at all. So what we can do now is we want to 3D camera track this footage. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the plate layer down here. And we're going to go up to effect, perspective, and we're going to grab the 3D camera tracker. And this will go ahead and analyze. So it should take about like another minute. I feel like everything in this tutorial is like almost automated. It's like you got to wait for this to analyze. You got to freeze this, you know, I don't know. Anyway, you go ahead and grab like your third cup of coffee at this point, <laughs> cuddle with your puppy or whatever you kids do now these days. So now that it's done analyzing, what we can do is make sure to select the effect and we'll see all of these beautiful points here. And what we need to do is we need to select a point that's right near our tree here. So we'll grab maybe this little pink point here. And what we'll do is select it, right click it, and we'll click on create null and camera. Now I'm not going to click on create text and camera just because I want to show you how you can do this with pretty much any object, not just text. So we'll go with create null and camera. And as you can see, we'll have a null object here and a camera. And what we need to do is make sure we're at the beginning of our timeline and we need to grab our text and we need to grab the Pickwit tool or the parent tool and we'll parent it to the null object. And once that's there, our text is going to you know, blend in directly with our scene with no problem at all. So that is looking great. So at this point, we're pretty much done, but I want to animate our text. And since our text is parented to the null object, we can animate the null object. So what we can do is select the null object, hit P on our keyboard for position, 
at a keyframe forward position, move forward in, you know, in time, maybe to the end of the animation, and we can just create this offset animation like this, and then basically we're gonna have our text animating from right to left. So that's looking really good. Okay, so at this point we've accomplished what I wanted to create, and we're pretty much done. So turn on motion blur for your layers over here, turn it on at the top, and you can go ahead and render what you have. And after a quick render, this is what we have, and the text is right behind our object, so that looks really good. So I hope you guys found this tutorial insightful. If you guys did, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel for more After Effects videos, and please be sure to hit us up on our social media networks. Those links are in the description of the video. And as always, I hope you have a good day.